It's a sad reality. The average car was not built for the avid driver. Case in point, subcompact or B-segment cars are usually boring grocery getters that are merely meant to get you from point A to point B. And while they are improving in terms of performance, space, and features, a lot of them don't really appeal to the driving enthusiast. Fortunately, not all of them are built the same way. Today, we take a closer look at a subcompact that does appeal to the average driver, the Mazda 2 Elite. This generation of the Mazda 2 has been around for a while. It was first introduced as the Hazumi concept back in 2014. But despite that being over six years ago, this car still looks fresh, which goes to show that the Kodo design language is indeed timeless. Receiving a refresh for the 2020 model, the Mazda 2 now gets sleeker LED headlights, a redesigned front grille, and a more streamlined bumper. Now, I'm not usually a fan of body lines that flow in multiple directions, but this is nicely executed. I also like the fact that the side mirrors are connected to the doors as opposed to the A-pillar which serves the car well in terms of form and function. The Mazda 2 rolls on 16-inch wheels, which suit the car very well. And it's a shame that it keeps raining because it's sad to see this beautiful soul red paint dirty like this. But it also goes to show that nobody does red better than Mazda. At the back, not much has changed except for the rear bumper. But it's nice to see that you now get a reverse camera aside from the four proximity sensors down here. Opening this trunk reveals 440 liters of cargo space, which extends to 950 liters with the seats folded. It's worth noting that the seats don't fold flat because there is a bit of a step between the trunk floor and the back of the seats. In any case, the trunk space is quite generous for something this big. The Mazda 2 has a special place in my heart. It's the first car I ever reviewed. Yes, it's what kicked off this channel the first video. Back then, there were two variants, the V and R. This Elite model is more akin to the entry-level V variant because you no longer get stuff like leather seats, the big tack in the middle, rain-sensing wipers, and the head-up display. Even the dash material is slightly different. It's harder plastic. But that's not to say that this is bare because this is still one of the best interiors in its class. And besides putting all that would have jacked up the price even further, and if you're willing to spend that much, you might as well go with the Mazda 3 Elite. Now, the seats may not be leather, but they're still extremely comfortable, and they offer the best driving position possible. I would have wanted it to have a bit more under thigh support, but in any case, the bolstering isn't too aggressive, and you have a nice commanding view of the road. The steering wheel is leather wrapped, and I love the fact that it also tilt and telescopes to further give you that perfect driving position. The instrument cluster now comes in the form of a big speedometer flanked by two LCD screens, which displays your tachometer, fuel gauge, and fuel mileage. However, I do wish there was a center armrest, and while I'm at it, a dome light here in the middle. Moving on to the infotainment system, you now get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as standard. And like what I mentioned earlier, a reverse camera. And while everyone goes gaga over touchscreens, I love the fact that this gives you the best of both worlds, as you can operate it by touch, and it also comes with this rotary knob that is extremely easy to operate. It is so intuitive that you won't even have to read the manual to know how it works. And the bonus is it keeps your touchscreen free of fingerprints. You also get two USB ports and a 12 volt socket plus an SD card slot. The climate control system is fully automatic and I love how they make use of these huge rotary knobs. So you can easily operate this without taking your eyes off the road. But this car's Achilles heel is really its interior space, or the lack of it. Okay, I get it, space matters, but I think it's overrated. Because for me personally, as long as my knees and my head isn't brushing up or hitting anything, I'm perfectly fine. And it's also worth noting that you don't get much toys back here. You don't even get an armrest or rear air vents. But that's also fine, because this car more than makes up for it behind the wheel. So 
how does this car make up for it? Well, that's through the sheer joy you get with driving this thing. And that's achieved through the Jin Bai Tai philosophy, which as you may already know, stands for horse and rider as one. You really feel like this car is a part of your body. It just feels so natural. And they achieve that through sheer balance because this car responds the way you expect it to respond. It's not numb, nor is it overly sensitive. And that resonates through everything you interact with, the steering, the brakes, and the throttle. So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, let's start with the steering. It's light and responsive, yet it doesn't feel disconnected or fidgety. And then the brakes. They provide extremely good stopping power, yet they're not overly sensitive because they feel very linear. It's well modulated. And then there's the throttle, which is very responsive, yet it isn't jerky. It still manages to be very refined. But I have to say that the biggest highlight of this car is really the six-speed automatic transmission. It's not a DCT, nor is it a CVT, but it is tuned so well. The programming on this thing is superb. It knows exactly when to downshift. It responds so well to your throttle inputs. And when it does that, it does it so smoothly with a sense of refinement. The best part is it doesn't auto upshift and allows you to rev the car out even when you're not using the paddle shifters. But when you are using the paddle shifters, it responds instantaneously. Now under the hood of the Mazda 2 lies a 1.5 liter Sky Active G engine, which produces 110 metric horsepower and 141 newton meters of torque. Now peak power may come up higher in the rev range, but this does not feel lethargic on the lower end of the rev range because the car is just so light. So with that, the car always feels light on its feet. It is very peppy. But aside from this car's stellar driving dynamics, it also has several features that tells you that it was built for the driving enthusiast. First, you have sport mode. So if you hit that if you want to do some spirited driving. And that alters your throttle response as well as your shift mapping. You can also put this thing in manual mode and make use of the pedal shifters. And when you do that, it shifts instantaneously. But aside from that, it also has a kick down pedal. So you just floor the gas if you need an instant downshift. And the car will be more than happy to oblige. But even when you're driving this thing hard, you don't pay a penalty when it comes to fuel efficiency. Because this can get 11 kilometers per liter in heavy traffic. And when you take this out on the highway, it can get well over 20 kilometers per liter. So what's it like for the rest of the occupants in the car, aside from the driver? Well, the ride is still extremely comfortable. Now, this does have a torsion beam suspension at the back, like most subcompact cars do. But the suspension tuning is also very good because it provides good handling. It gives you a lot of confidence when you're taking corners at speed. Yet, the ride and the suspension is extremely compliant, so it's never jarring. It's a good riding and driving experience for everyone on board. You're the kind of person who needs a daily driver, something that's practical and affordable, but you wanna have fun behind the wheel, then you really should look no further. The Mazda 2 Elite can be yours for 995,000 pesos. And for a subcompact car that caters to the driving enthusiast, that's very good value. Now, I know not everyone's a gearhead, but hear me out. Not everyone's an audiophile, but if an audiophile says a pair of speakers is good, you better believe it. The best part is, this won't cost you an arm and a leg.